Um... So I think, I, I believe that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So I think it actually makes a lot of sense why I'm making all of these videos that are like drudging up memories from the, like the worst period of my life. <laughs> I did the Wattpad videos, then I did the OG YouTuber book videos, and now I am doing a Tumblr book video. Everything is good. Tumblr, much like Wattpad, I was never on. I never had an account. I was on like Facebook and YouTube, and that's pretty much it. I got Instagram when I was like 15, but just Tumblr, I never touched. I never, which, I mean, my like mentally, mentally, I'm, I'm I dodged a bullet. I do really think, and I'm not over-exaggerating at all when I say, I, I think that if I discovered Tumblr as like a 12 year old, I would not be sitting here today. <laughs> From my understanding, Tumblr was like a breeding ground for the mentally ill. It seems like it was the place to go to just make your mental illness and issues 1,000 times worse. And watch porn. I'm pretty sure the downfall of Tumblr- Oh my god, I need to stop talking about fucking porn in every single one of my videos. I believe Tumblr like created the culture for teens and preteens from like 2012 to 2015. The aesthetic was very moody, black and white clothing, jean jackets, this Im like this image. We've all seen this image. And in this video, this is who I'm trying to be. I'm trying to get like them, especially the little one on the end. <laughs> and I think the best way of understanding a group of people is by reading the literature, the doctrine that was either popular on Tumblr or popularized by Tumblr. The first one we have here is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Teven. What the fuck? <laughs> Steven? By Steven Chaba- Sorry, what the fuck is- like, I can't read that. Those are just squiggly lines. Now, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, the movie, is one of my favorite movies of all time. It-, it, it See, this, like, this is why I should not have been on Tumblr, and I'm so glad I wasn't, because it is my comfort movie. That movie about- <laughs> A little, like, ninth grade boy whose best friend commits suicide a year before and then he meets a group of seniors in high school and befriends them. This book about trauma is my comfort film. It's the movie that when I need to pick me up, I say, okay, let's, okay, perks of being a wallflower. But I've yet to actually read the book and I'll be completely uh, upfront and honest with you all. I have already started this book. I'm currently on page 78. <laughs> I bought it a few days ago and then the second I got it, I, I said, I, I gotta check it out a little bit. I just want to see what it's about because I love, I fucking love this story. For some reason, I'm not sure what it even is, but there's something just so comforting about the world. I think it's probably because I struggled a lot to make friends as a child and teenagers suck as well. Like, like they're, I think that the group of friends in this book is very rare because they're very supportive of one another and they're so interesting. They have like creative little hobbies that they share with one another and like support each other through their endeavors and like their, their dreams. But the past few days I've been picking it up every once in a while and I, I, like, I've been yearning. I have been yearning to read this book, but the past week I've just been like not able to do this yet because I've just been so busy. I pulled two all-nighters in the past week, so I haven't been able to form a coherent enough thought to film this. But every once in a while I've been picking this book up and just reading a couple pages and being like, I gotta stop. <laughs> But so far it's perfect. Like the movie just captured this book so well. Although I do have to say, I do prefer books over movies. I'm just, I'm just like literate and smart like that, I guess. <laughs> Reading for me is just such an immersive thing that I feel very much so in this world. And it feels as amazing as it is devastating. The next one I'm gonna read is I'll Give You the Sun. I don't know what this, like what? I don't like this at all. This is the cover. I truly don't know much about this book. The reason why I picked it is because I just googled Tumblr books and there was a Goodreads list that someone had made that included this book and I know that my friend Sally really likes this book and she very much so gives off I spent way too much time on Tumblr as a preteen vibes. So I thought that this would just be perfect. Um, <laughs> sorry, Sally catching strays. I haven't even like talked to her about this. <laughs> The next one, obviously, is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Uh, a signed copy, by the way. I'm better than you. <laughs> you know what, this one, the plot of it, I'm not even gonna explain, because I don't wanna know. I've never watched this movie, but from my basic understanding, it is about Shailene Woodley, who has cancer, and she falls in love with a boy, and okay will be there always. 
Is that something? And the final book I will be reading is a poetry collection, actually. It's Milk and Honey. I feel like recently this book has become a bit of a meme. I've been seeing some videos and stuff of people going back and reading some of the poems in this poetry collection and being like, what the fuck were we doing? Like, what? <laughs> like, why did we think that this was so deep? But Rupi Carr, I remember, I believe she's a Canadian poet, so as a fellow Canadian, hi. Okay. But she was everywhere. I remember seeing this book, and I believe she even released a second book, a second poetry collection that they were everywhere, in every bookstore, in the window. I wouldn't be surprised if I found out that they sold like over a billion copies, like. <laughs> but as a preteen, I didn't read poetry and I already wanted to kill myself, so I never picked this up ever. But I'm very excited after 10 long years to finally appease my curiosity because I've always wondered what the fuck she has to say that was so influential. And poetry too. It's a really remarkable thing that a poet in the age of the internet and social media was able to become so successful. But yeah, these are the four books that I will be reading for this video. I'm obviously just going to continue with The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I'm probably going to finish it today. Did you guys hear that? I'm scared. I don't know what was that, guys, and I didn't do that. I'm scared. Ah, I'm a scary hacker in your computer! Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Using the internet without a VPN is like walking through the wild, wild west with an empty holster. And unlike the mean cowboys and bandits that want to steal your information, NordVPN is dedicated to protecting your privacy. And be assured that you're protected everywhere because one NordVPN account can protect up to 10 devices. And you can use my specific link to get four months for free with a two year plan. Think of NordVPN's threat protection feature like a group of bodyguards that are dedicated to keeping you safe 24 seven. I am incessantly downloading files onto my computer. It's like I'm, I'm addicted to it. And I am so glad to have NordVPN to check every single one of those files for malware. Click in links. I do that too! If that link is leading you to a malicious, scary website, threat protection will check that and block. Mm. And oh my god, pop-up ads? Downloading sound effects and music and videos can be quite the harrowing experience. My go-to website for converting links to usable MP3s and MP4s just love to display very explicit pop-up ads. But since installing NordVPN on my computer, those ads cease to exist. I can finally edit my videos without staring at those pesky little ads. Thank you, NordVPN. A like, actually, seriously, thank you. <laughs> well, damn, I guess I'll go hack some else that doesn't use NordVPN with the discount code on the screen that they can use to get a huge discount with the purchase of a two-year plan plus four extra months. It's been me this entire time. Or you can click the link in the first line in the description or the pinned comment of this video. I'm back. Yeah, they have the NordVPN. All my efforts were useless. Guys, <clears throat> sorry if it's it's a mess. Everything's a mess right now. I I don't know. I don't really know what happened yesterday. Um, <laughs> I think around like six six o'clock, I got a really bad headache. I don't I don't know why. I pulled two. I can't really think of any reason why my body would do that to me. All nighters. I don't know what I did to deserve that in the past week. I guess God hates me. And I guess if God you're watching, I'm sorry. I don't know what I did, but I'm sorry. Probably wasn't even my fucking fault either. I'm like an angel. I will never do anything bad or wrong. I don't deserve that. But I did manage to finish The Perks of Being a Wallflower. My Goodreads review was, I want to rip every single strand of hair out of my head using only my teeth. Five stars. <laughs>
<laughs> what I will say is I think that I prefer the movie, but I loved this. I loved it so much. I think that the movie, I think I said this, captures the book so well, which is so rare. It's not even about like the story either, like down to the casting and the, the, just the atmosphere and vibe that's being created in that movie. It's ever, even just like changing did I talk about this? In the book, the song is Landslide when they're going through the tunnel. But in the movie, they change it to Hero by David Bowie. I don't know how that came about, but I think that's the smartest thing. That is the smartest decision anyone's ever made. Ever. To say, do you know what? Landslide doesn't really work here for this. What about Hero by David Bowie? lives were changed. And I also think I've realized what I like so much about the story. I think that I relate so much to Charlie in so many ways, not just Charlie, but like all of the characters in very different ways. But I think that mainly Charlie, just the way that he writes about like, I feel like your teenage years are so like, <coughs> everything is just so, <coughs> Like there's so many feelings, there's so many emotions, your hormones are going fucking crazy. And as a teen, I didn't release that. I, I suppressed a lot. For the most part, I just waited and waited and waited and waited for them to be done. I hated high school, I hated being a teenager. I hated being told what to do. But also looking back, like <laughs> this book also made me think about my routine as a teenager. And it's fuck like, what was I doing? I was going to school for like six to seven hours a day. After school, eat a snack, go to work. I got my first job when I was 14 at Little Caesars. Yes, I was a crazy boy. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> In fact, wait, I think I actually... Authentic, directly from the source. This is authentic Little Caesars memorabilia. I also, I had two jobs in high school. Well, I guess I had three, but whatever. But my second job was at this really disgusting uh, uh, barbecue restaurant. Who, that's only purpose was to launder money, allegedly. Allegedly. But I would be there sometimes until midnight. Most of the time I'd be there until like 11 or midnight, after midnight. And then I'd go home, do homework, and then be expected to just wake up the next day at like 7 and do it all. Like, I don't... That was awful. And the characters in this book are not living a lifestyle remotely close to that. But there's something very cathartic about it because I'm watching these teens who I feel like are having a really well-rounded teenage hood, teen hood, teen, I don't, you know what I'm saying. And they're acting on their urges and they are lashing out. And that's something I never did as a teenager. I never acted on my urges. I never ever really lashed out or did anything close to what they're doing here. Well, I guess on the weekends I would go to my friend's parents' basements and black out, but like I wasn't, like what the fuck else was I supposed to do? But the author just captures what it feels like to be a teen so perfectly. It gets so confusing and you have all these like feelings and thoughts and, and motives that you just don't understand why they're happening. I don't know. I could just go on and on and on about this story. I just love it. There's, I just, there's something about it that I just love. But I also this morning read the first chapter of The Fault in Our Stars and this I'm really liking too. I think it's very silly. It's very, very of its time. We've met Hazel and we've met, I think his name's August or Augustine. Hazel's currently fighting cancer in her lungs and Augustine had cancer when he was a child and I believe he actually lost his leg from it. So he uses a prosthetic, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. It's very cutesy in like a kind of a cringy way, but like in a cringy cutesy way. But my goal for today is to finish reading The Fault in Our Stars and I also want to read Milk and Honey. I also have this on audiobook, so I'm going to go for a walk right now and listen to a bit of it. Then I'm going to come back and I have to build a... I gotta build a plant. I'm gonna build that. So. Yeah. Stinky. Mr. Stink.
insert the video of it probably this it probably this bitch ass goose trying to attack me the other day when I tried to go swimming. Thinks it owns the entire lake. Insert that clip now. <laughs> Aren't you cold? Your babies are over there. I see your babies. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Bye. This isn't your lake. Everyone's lake. Hey! Today drained me. That probably was the longest day of my fucking life I've ever had ever. I did about four things. That thing, by the way, I love it, by the way. Don't say shit about it. I love it. It's not finished yet, though. I, I threw a couple of my plants on there. I already, already obvious. <laughs> I obviously had to put my salt rock lamp on there because that's a vibe. <laughs> But I just showered and I'm about to go to bed because I am beat. <laughs> but first I want to read Milk and Honey. A few hours ago I finished The Fault in Our Stars, which I'll talk more about later. Weird fucking book. <laughs> Poor Anne, look, what was the Anne Frank st I don't, whatever. So yeah, this will probably take me about five minutes to read. So <laughs> I'm gonna do that right now and I'll talk to you again in the morning. So yeah. Wow, this is so stupid. I feel like I look like Ellen. No, I look like Zendaya. I think I should start out by saying I, I think I woke up a bit sick, which is, it's fine. It's like, it's pouring rain and I'm gonna spend the entire day reading this gay ass book. But if that affects my performance for the rest of this video, I don't think I should get marks taken off. I was throwing up last night but it's because I ate too much cake. But before I do that, we absolutely must talk about and Let's start with The Fault in Our Stars because I, I really did like this book. I think it was fun. It was, it was funny. There were parts of it that were joyful, but for the most part, it was incredibly sad. But okay, first of all, I'm gonna do spoilers. So if you do not wanna be spoiled for The Fault in Our Stars, just skip ahead. <laughs> I'm quite surprised as to how little I knew about this story. Like I truly had no clue what to expect. I thought I did, but bitch, they did. They, they went to Amsterdam. There was like this side character, Van Houten, who was like an author of this book. The Anne Frank house played a huge part in this book. I'm, I, it, th that was so weird. <laughs> the one thing I couldn't stop thinking about while reading this book though, if I were to have read it at like 13 years old, um, I just, and this is gonna sound awful, I know, I already know. And I don't think like this now, it's disgusting, it's an awful way to think, but if I were to read this at 13 years old, all I would be able to think is, oh, fuck, I need cancer. Good things never fucking happen to me. Like, what? I would have ramped up my carcinogen intake. Like, it would have been over. Like, not for any reason, though, other than the attention I would have got. I would have read this and been like, damn, like, your parents pay attention to you, and, like, you get to, like, get all this free shit, go on free trips all the time, and <laughs> people are always asking about you, and, like, people you went to school with are like, what, what, what happened to Hazel? Like, where's Sean? It's been two years. Oh, he got cancer. Yeah, he's living out his dream with his manic pixie dream boy. Ultimately though, it's a good book. Like, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Last night I also managed to get through all of Milk and Honey, which, take a look at that. Do you see that? Dog ear, every, almost every fucking page. I read this entire thing with my jaw 
on the floor. I want to go about this carefully because I can totally see how this could be honestly life-changing for young girls to read. And it's also clearly so, so, so personal to the author. She's so open and honest about her own experiences and her own trauma and all of her most personal experiences and aspects of life, but... <sighs> like, I just... Can we just go through some of them, please? Like, I just want to, I, I just want to read you some of them. And then, not even a lot, like, I don't know where else to go from there. The poems, I state, like, of course it's poetry. Anything's poetry, if you say it's poetry. A lot of these, though, are just statements. Like, they're just statements that randomly throughout the sentence are broken up with the return key. A daughter should not have to beg her father for a relationship. Okay, but that's it. Like, that's the only thing on the page. The entire page. The idea that we are so capable of love, but still choose to be toxic. All right. Every revolution starts and ends with his lips. An entire page just to say that. I am learning how to love him by loving myself. Okay, Rue, like, is this RuPaul? Can I get an amen up in here? Now play the music! But then on the page two, I'm so- like, I'm not gonna show the body, but like, look at that drawing. The drawings too, I'm sorry, but like... <sighs> I think she wrote this when she was 19. What I really love about this book though, is the way that it's broken up into parts. There's four parts. The first part is the hurting, the second part is the loving, and it goes on to the breaking, and then the healing. The hurting is about being sexually assaulted. Then it goes on to the loving, which is about the first relationship, the first loving relationship that she was in. Then the breaking, which is about this relationship breaking down. And then the healing is about healing from this breakup. I thought that that was fantastic. Also the way that, like, she uses words like I'm, till, Cause she also doesn't capitalize anything or really use any punctuation at all There are some poems where she'll just randomly include periods so just randomly though. It's like I has period cheeseburger I want french fry with period my second cheese period burger most of the poems in here though I just find so melodramatic very obviously written by a teenager or I think she how old was she when she wrote this so she was born in 1992 and this came out in 2015 oh so she was like 23 or 24 and she writes he says I am sorry I am not an easy person to want I look at him surprised who said I wanted easy I don't crave easy I crave goddamn difficult Okay. Okay, well now that I have that information in my brain, I don't feel so bad. <laughs> she was 24 writing, You've touched me without even touching me. And it took up the entire page. This one I found very funny. You look like you smell of honey and no pain. Let me have a taste of that. <laughs> it's perfect. Like, no, I know I'm- it seems like maybe I'm like ridiculing this book, but I love it. I love it. I love it for the wrong reasons though, I will say, but like, it's fantastic. Like, it must hurt to know I am your most beautiful regret. <laughs> Look, another fucking RuPaul inspired poem. You mustn't have to make them want you. They must want you themselves. If you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you gonna love everybody else? <laughs> I am a museum full of art, but you had your eyes shut. The thing worth holding on to would not have let go. I was music, but you had your ears cut off. Rivers fall from my mouth, tears my eyes can't carry. So, uh, the way I interpret that one on page 118 is, is she drooling? Rivers fall from my mouth, tears my eyes can't carry. So she's crying from her mouth, but wouldn't crying from your mouth just be D drool again another RuPaul <laughs> you must enter a relationship with yourself before anyone else Now if you can't love yourself, how the hell you gonna love somebody else? There is one poem however that it's a bit long, but I really want to read it My issue with what they consider beautiful is their concept of beauty centers around excluding people I find hair beautiful when a woman wears it like a garden on her skin that is the definition of beauty. Big hooked noses pointing upward to the sky. 
like they're rising to the occasion, skin the color of earth, my ancestors planted crops on to feed a lineage of women with thighs thick as tree trunks, eyes like almonds, deeply hooded with conviction. The rivers of Punjab flow through my bloodstream, so don't tell me my women aren't as beautiful as the ones in your country. Our backs tell stories no books have the spine to carry. That is good. Like, that's fantastic. Where was that? Why do we only have one? But then several pages later, you read poems like, you are your own soulmate. Or another, I think this is the fourth RuPaul inspired poem. If you are not enough for yourself, you will never be enough for someone else. Can I get an amen up in here? Amen. amen. All right, now let the music play. All I am is a man. Rupee just contains multitudes, but I'd say the main tood is um, corny Tumblr quote. I was expecting to look under some of them and, and read just girly things number 28. <laughs> Okay, so I just finished, finished, <laughs> I'll give you the sun. I read to like page 100 and then I was like, <sighs> okay, my issue with this book is it's overwritten. There's too much of it. It's almost 400 pages and the majority of it is fluff. That I think that if you are attached to these characters, if you're attached to the story, reading these silly little anecdotes and side quests would be very entertaining. But I'm a 22 year old man and I do not give a fuck what 12 year olds are doing. <laughs> also just the way it's written, it's written in a very immature way for, for children, it's YA. Out of all of these books, I'd say that this book is the most YA. Noah keeps on calling everyone ass hat. Everybody is an ass hat. It reminds me a lot of Alice Oseman, like Heartstopper vibes. Just a whole bunch of quirky gay characters that don't fit in. So I just decided to read a summary of the rest of this online and I'm not too disappointed that I didn't decide to just push through this. Again, it's a great story. It's a fantastic story. There's just too much of it and I, I don't have the time for it right now. Especially after reading The Perks of Being a Wallflower and The Fault in Our Stars, they all seem to kind of be the same story. We've got the manic pixie dream boys and girls, we've got the trauma, we've got the death, we've got the mentally ill, we've got the gays. I honestly think if I were to read this before reading The Perks of Being a Wallflower and The Fault in Our Stars, I'd be able to get through it with ease, but I'm just feeling a bit like oversaturated with moody teenagers. <laughs> I cannot believe that this is how people used to dress. Like, this is... It's really ugly, hey? Like, I look just like a 2014 bisexual girl on Tumblr. This isn't even a real turtleneck. This is just a piece of cloth that I tied around my neck and I... You probably can't even tell. <laughs> but just to put a little cap on this video, wrap it up in a nice coquette bow, I want to give some final thoughts on these books. The first thing I want to say is I get it. I fully understand. Upon reading them though, I'm so glad that I did not read them when I was a teenager because this is this is what I would have ooh. This is probably who I would have been if I started reading these books. Because these books would have absolutely destroyed my brain. <laughs> the perks of being a wallflower, devastating. The fault in our stars, so so sad. But it just it encapsulates that era so well, so, so, so perfectly. I'll give you the sun, all right. Milk and Honey. This was probably my favorite book out of the four. And I really wanna be as clear as possible, even though I already know there's gonna be people in my comments get <laughs> I respect it, I see the vision. I think that she is so brave for this. And I'm sure it helped so many people. You know what, they're not for me. I think that the poems that kind of, I guess, bothered me, or the poems that I cringed at a little bit, were very self-helpy, which I'm, I'm just not, I find self-help to be very redundant and corny. And many of these poems I feel like could be treated as like positive self-affirmations and I'm already a narcissist, I don't need those. Like I feel like a less cynical person would read these poems and be like, I am beautiful.
beautiful and I don't need to shave my legs. <laughs> Essentially what I'm trying to say is I'm the issue. I'm the problem here. This just isn't for me, but the vibe that it brought me, it was probably the most like palpable Tumblr vibe that I picked up on out of all of these books. It felt like I was scrolling through Tumblr while I was turning these pages, even though, you know, I've never even scrolled through Tumblr. But Rupee is just a master at creating an experience. Let's go with that. God, I look disgusting. Wow. Anyways, do you know what? I, I'm wearing sweatpants right now. I wanna put a whole fit together. To end this video, I've decided to fully immerse myself, my person in um, the Tumblr aesthetic. So let's go find some jeans. Do I do the Converse or the loafers? I'm honestly leaning more towards the loafers. What, I gotta refer to that pick. Yeah, they're all wearing loafers or like Doc Martin type of shoes. I don't have, uh, it looks like they're, most of them are wearing Doc Martens. I don't have those. <laughs> Damn. I guess we'll just have to settle for my Ferragamo loafers. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Oh, you want to know what my favorite bands are? Arctic Monkeys, Radiohead, uh, Marina and the Diamonds, Lana Del Rey, The Neighborhood. There's this up and coming artist that I, she's like, apparently she's like 13 years old or some shit. Her name's Billie Eilish. She released a song recently, just the other day actually on SoundCloud called, it's called Ocean Eyes. You should hear it. It's really good. Cage Elephant, Tame Impala. Uh, are these bands you've even heard of? Sorry, Are they, they, may, they might may, may not be uh, mainstream enough for you. But that's just me, that says nothing about you. That's just, I listen to really like alternative, weird, freak music made for freaks and weirdos like myself. Because I, people, um, normal people scare me also. American Horror Story, are you, Coven, are you watching it? Season whatever, Coven. That's what's airing right now. I love Ryan Murphy. I need a cigarette. I don't think I have any. Uh, yeah, my mom's a bitch. I hate that uh, Sorry, mom. Well, I, she's not gonna see this actually, so what? Never mind. She doesn't watch my videos at all. She really doesn't fuck with me. <laughs> but yeah, this is the outfit. I basically feel awesome. I feel like a superhero. I totally understand why people dressed like this back in 2014. I feel like I've like adorned my cape and mask and, and weapons and I'm gonna be about, but about to go to like, go to high school and I'm um, probably like in ninth grade, but I'm gonna go chain smoke cigarettes with the seniors out back. <laughs> That's where I'll be. Got a crazy ass head rush too. I am not used to smoking cigarettes yet, but I'll get there. That's what they keep telling me. I'm up to two packs a day. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. I said that already. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!